Happy birthday, firecracker. Good boy. Whoa, good job, pumpkin. Happy birthday, pumpkin. Welcome back, Mangler3M here. We're going to continue with Honkai Star Rail. Sounds like the game's already started. I'll flip over to that. There we go. Alright, let's see what quests we're on. We did some leveling up during the week. Um, people are higher level now. You can see right now we have... Hmm. He's level 70, she's 60. He's level 70, he's our ice guy. Waltz can be leveled up to level 70 eventually. Kafka's all the way up to 69, she could be up to 70 very soon. And Sam goes up to potentially level 60. Same with Chinko, Chinque, Chinche. I'll repronounce it, Serval, same thing. So we've got potential moving up these characters. Let's uh... Let's try with this one. It says, talk to March 7th, State of Affairs. It's a couple temporary events. I'll go ahead and <clears throat> knock out as many as we can. know if any videos or sound or anything's problems and changed up the settings quite a bit and I'm also checking out performance why it'll, it'll disappear every second or so every few seconds why that is still loading Scary. I was afraid it was going to work. This game used to have that much uh, GPU. Probably my computer, I probably use the end of computer. <laughs>
Let's see if I put everything on the lowest if it loads faster. So far, so good. When the Master Diviner gets back, we might be in for tough times. It's making me a little nervous. Are you ready? Bring it on. Alright, enter the Crossroads of Fate. Note that your choice will bring about irreversible outcome. By continuing forward, you will miss these two temporary quests. Okay, well let's do these temporary quests first. I think that's what happened last time. Let's just go knock them out. The next destination, up to you. Have you read the novel about the Ten Lords Commission? After some time, new message. Mangler, is everything going well? Very well. It is unbelievably well, actually. That's good. I've always believed in your abilities. Someone just reported in. Did you save a cloud knight? It was nothing. I wouldn't call it saving. We had a successful collaboration. Thank you very much for your help. The cloud knight that handed over his, all his intel to the seat of divine foresight. If it weren't for your help, he'd have had a hard time getting away. As you've already infiltrated the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus, please keep monitoring their activities. Anything I should focus on? I've mentioned that the Cloud Knight named Shinjin went missing a few months ago. I want to know what happened to him, dead or alive, so I can give an answer to his family. Let's avoid contacting each other here from here on. If you are seen going in and out of the seat of divine foresight, some those disciples are sure to become suspicious of you. Please come back in one piece. Otherwise, the general will be quite upset with me. Can I squeeze through there? Viscous agreed to meet me here, but there's no sight of him. What gifts? There's a letter here. What's this on the envelope? Gray peony? That's me. Ugh, this must be from Green Hibiscus. <clears throat> you fully demonstrated your bravery and devotion to us. Now I'll give you a chance to prove how loyal and reliable you are to the organization. This mission is of utmost importance, and I don't feel comfortable entrusting it to others. Only a fighter like you can handle such an important task. Yesterday, a disciple of Sonded in disgrace. She posted a letter as she defected. Based on our investigation, it's an urgent missive to the seat of divine foresight. It shouldn't have arrived yet. Intercept it and help us mitigate our losses. Once you finish the arduous yet glorious task, I will introduce you to the Exalting Sanctum's leader of the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus. So long as he ascends, you can begin your journey on the way to, of immortality. The Disciples sure know how to keep a low profile. Looks like I'll need to help them complete this mission. If they're looking to intercept mail, I should probably start by searching near Exalting Sanctum's Psycrane stamps.
let's start by going across. Much closer here. You rummage the packages on this side green stand, but you don't find the letter you're looking for. Not on this stand. Let's check a different one. from the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus. Judging from these urgent instructions, the Disciples are aware of a seat of divine foresight operation to infiltrate their ranks. No wonder Green Hibiscus was so eager to intercept us. I'll use my phone to make a copy, and then hand it over to Green Hibiscus. Gray Peony. Did you get the stuff? Got it. I've got it. Where are we meeting? Shh. There might be surveillance. Place where we copy scripture. Person in charge wants to see you ASAP. Do not reply. Moon, this is the reliable disciple I mentioned to you, Grey Peony. Grey Peony, this is Mav Moon, the head of our operations in Exalting Sanctum. It seems you have some impressive skills in your arsenal. You're too kind. How much can you bench? You look kind of weak. You're too kind. No need for modesty. I've studied martial arts for years. I can tell how strong you are with just a glance. You seem like you've got it all figured out. What brings you to the disciples of Sanctus Medicus? I despise the hunt. I want to become even stronger. I want to gain immortality. I'm not sure. I'll say the third. Good. Life is a miracle and a blessing. Any futile attempt to forsake it is a disgraceful betrayal. You have been enlightened to the significance of immortality. You have already surpassed those shameful mortals. Here, take this prescription. Through this medicine, you will become like me. You will be able to break the shackles that the devilish archer author has used to chain your soul. You will gain unbridled power and freedom. The disciple responsible for creating medicinal pellets heard of your exploits. They prepared the prescription for you personally. Some of the ingredients can be purchased at an apothecary. But others 
will require you to come up with your own solution. Given your strength, that shouldn't pose a problem. Do you have any questions? How many people are in our organization? Who prepares the prescriptions? Can I meet the boss? Why'd you join the organization? Uh, I'll say the second one. That's sensitive information. I know who they are, but for their security, I can't reveal their identities. It's not that I doubt your loyalty, Grey Peony. It's like I said, security. Can I meet the boss? The boss? You mean the master? You'll meet them, but for now there's no rush. All in good time. Keep fulfilling your duties, as you have been. With your strength, you'll have an audience with the master in no time. How many people? I don't know. I've heard our members are in the tens of thousands. The Disciples of Sanctus Medicus has a flat organizational structure. The head of each area reports directly to the Master. I know nothing about what goes on elsewhere. The benefit is that even if our enemies were to wipe out the exalting Sanctum branch, it wouldn't affect our brothers and sisters in other areas. Why'd you join? I'm ashamed to admit it, but I once worked alongside those devils. I trained in spear techniques for almost a century. I nearly became a Cloud Knight instructor. After centuries? But I was trapped in a weak mortal shell. I was never able to surpass the final barrier that separated me from the martial arts geniuses. Fortunately, the draft of Draconic Surge, the prescription you hold in your hand, rescued me. Once I took that medicine, I became more powerful than any mortal could ever dream of. Now, everything has changed. Jersene and his pitiful spearmanship are no more. All that remains is a loyal disciple of Merciful Medicus. Jersene? What'd you say your old name was? Were you an undercover agent for the Seed of Divine Foresight? Wait. You recognize me? Where do you know me from? Your face changed when you heard my name. M M Mav Moons, sir. We have a problem. I suspect this person may be the agent who's been looking for you. Idiot! What kind of trials are you running? You let an agent infiltrate our ranks? I, I, I couldn't have known, sir. I, I witnessed this person slay a cloud knight before my very eyes. Detestable. The devilish archer author allows these pitiful mortals to face death without fear. Self-sacrifice is their way of fooling us into opening our doors. You've really got an active imagination, or I don't think I said anything about revealing my identity, or I'm done, let's do this, you can come at me together. In that case, divine foresight devil, it's time for you to meet your demise. And the fight. There are three of them. I don't even know if I have my best people, but I doubt I was leveling anyone else up, so we'll see. Oh, they're just monsters. Well, that's handy. Strike the clock! Oh. Immortality means forever! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A miracle! Good Survive or be destroyed. There is no he other choice. Oh, yeah, he is. Yeah. Looks like everybody has a strength in this fight. Yeah. 
get a shield, that means he's probably gonna pull out a co counter one of these things. He's like, how could I lose? Is he gonna try to re-recruit me? So Mav Moon was the agent that Ching Zhu lost contact with. He joined the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus. I should go to the seat of Divine Foresight and tell Ching Zhu. I don't know if this mission was a success or a failure. Would you like me to relay your message? I want to enter the seat of divine foresight. You've returned in one piece. So, what happened? Did everything go as planned? You tell her what happened as you worked undercover. Don't worry. Your operation was a success. Although your identity was ultimately exposed, you gained a wealth of invaluable intelligence. On top of that, you managed to get out without a scratch. <sighs> I never imagined that your scene would choose the path of evil. You did the right thing. I'm afraid this is how the Plague's author operates. Using notions of power and life to draw countless people like your scene away from bright futures. Down a path of no return. You've managed to shine a light on the darkness of the enemy. 
With this intelligence, the seed of divine foresight will be able to improve its strategy. And for all your efforts, please accept this reward. Is there anything else you'd like to know about? Tell me about the current state of the disciples of Sanctus Medicus. Did you send a lot of people undercover? Tell me about the beliefs of the disciples. About the prescription the he prescription gave me. The prescription you acquired is beyond my knowledge. There are a few reliable alchemists that reside in Exalting Sanctum. I'd like to ask you to consult with them on the particulars of the prescription. This will allow the Seed of Divine Foresight to have a clear target for creating an antidote. Given that the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus has become aware of our operation, it's about time the Seed of Divine Foresight reeled in its net. If you turn up any details about the prescription, feel free to come back and find me anytime. Alright, head to the Exalting, ask about the drought, draft of the Phoenix. I'm also curious about temporary quests. Let's see if anyone's about to expire, just so we don't miss anything. Alright, Swarm Disaster. This is not temporary. In Simulated Universe there are new things called Swarm Disaster. It's a little different version. Instead of going room by room, they show you like a checkerboard, and then you like choose where you're gonna go. I'm not even gonna bother on screen, it's not that exciting. Okay, this one's about to expire, but you have to finish Obsequies performed a long road ahead. They have to do the Trailblaze mission to get to that. Okay, so I should just continue that. New quest, not going to expire. This one is going to expire. These are trying out new characters. So, but I don't need to do these all online. Okay, I can do these offline. This is basically like the practice that you just gotta remember. This one's not going to expire. Same with this one. If we complete this part, we get a new character, Yukong. That's cool. Alright, so basically it's saying continue with the regular quest. I also want to see who's coming up for wishes. Or for dreams. Okay, so we still got Don Hung uh, as imaginary. We already have Welt, and I'm not, I already have his character. I'm not all that excited about using that one. Um, we don't have enough for these stellar warps, so we will wait up until we get more first warps. Okay, back there. A warm-headed alchemist. Warm-hearted. Why, hello there. Anything I can help you with? Uh, Chin Shu asked me to find you. To explain what transpired. So, this is official Seed of Divine Foresight business, eh? Then I'll do everything I can to assist you. <laughs> Let's take a look at this prescription you mentioned. Hmm. Mm. If this request had come from anywhere else, it would have seemed like a joke. But the seat of divine foresight only deals in the serious. I can't understand this prescription. And I imagine that other alchemists won't be able to make sense of it either. I recommend you go directly to the chief alchemist. Lady Don Shu. Lady Don Shu is renowned for her unique line of reasoning. She's proposed several prescriptions that would have been incomprehensible to us if she hadn't explained the pharmacology. Still, those same prescriptions have always been able to produce miraculous effects. Lady Don Shu is a truly gifted alchemist. All the more amazing given her sightlessness, wouldn't you say? Lady Don Shu likes to pass the time over at Sinwood Pavilion. I'm sure you'll run into her if you head that way. Sinwood Pavilion.
maybe all three would have pointed in the same direction. Okay, we've seen doors. Ah, yes, we've met I've been looking forward to meeting you. How'd you know it was me? You have a very distinct scent. Losing one sense forces the other senses to become sharper. Yeah, because you're blind. I heard from I get other it. alchemists you have a prescription you wish me to assess. That was fast. Can you read it to me? Sure. Thank you. You read it to her. Hmm. A strange and dangerous prescription, but I believe I understand the pharmacology. It involves drawing upon the strength of long scions to attain the power of ascension. The specifics, however, will require further investigation. This will take some time. I could hardly happen upon Vidyadara Bone Marrow and test the prescription myself, could I? Leave your contact details with me. When I've completed my assessment of the pharmacology, I'll get in touch with you. Okay. Somebody's messaged me instantly. No, I'm standing right here. I have a preliminary understanding of the draft of Draconic Surge's pharmacology. But you're still busy with the troubles of the Shanshu, right? Right now? In a time like this? <clears throat> no worries, come find me when you're free. I should be waiting for you at the pavilion. Ah, you're back. From the sound of your stride, I sense you're in good spirits. I didn't even move. You can tell just by listening? A person's footfall reveals a lot about their strength and emotions. Much like how a person's breath may serve as an indication of their overall health. Let's get down to business. I analyzed the prescription you procured. The draft of Draconic Surge. Now that I have a preliminary conclusion, it needs to be delivered to the seat of Divine Foresight. What's the conclusion? The conclusion... But simply, I don't believe that the draft of Draconic Surge holds the cure to the Mara. Even in the foreseeable future, there will likely not be any such cure. I've compiled the details into a written analysis. If you're interested, feel free to take a look. This is a copy of pharmacological studies on the draft of Draconic Surge. If the Chief Counselor wants to see it urgently, I'll have to ask you to deliver it for me. Not far at all. I came up from Starsmith. Hey, uh, there's something I need to tell you. Not far, but a little bit out of the way. What is your purpose for entering the seed? You're back. Anything you wanted to share? The prescription from the disciples of Sanctus Medicus. Wow. Even for those alchemists, that was fast. It was Don Chu who figured it out. Don Chu? Wait, why would the Alchemy Commission's chief alchemist be away from her post? I've heard that the chief alchemist is visually impaired. She rarely leaves the Alchemy Commission delve. She has a vast knowledge and expertise. No wonder she was able to analyze the pharmacology so quickly. Let me see her report. Her expression is serious as she completes reading the report. No cure? <sighs> Where did these villains get their hands on such a complex prescription? This is infuriating. 
Still, this is a clue we can follow. Thank you. Please accept these gifts for your efforts. Being too polite, you've already rewarded me. Those were rewards from the Seed of Divine Foresight. These are gifts from me, personally. You've done so much for the Lafu. For the Sienjo. This is the least I could do. And we get a message instantly from Don Shu. Do you have some time? There's some issues which I'd like your expertise. Can you drop by the pavilion for a spell? Wait, I'm coming over. At your earliest convenience would be best. Two messages fast for someone who can't see the keyboard. I guess you can memorize the key. Thank you for coming on such short notice. What can I help you with? My stay in Exalting Sanctum was supposed to be focused on treating people and delivering medicine. But the Seat of Divine Foresight tasked me with analyzing the prescription. I've been severely delayed. I've already concocted some of the medicine in question. But there can't be any further delays. Could you assist me in ensuring it arrives on time? No problem. Thank you. The patient in question is a little girl. If she's gotten into any trouble, be sure to let me know when you get back. This is the medicine. Her house is near the Court of Tranquility. It shouldn't be hard to find her. Is this the one Don Shu sent me to find? Does she come here to treat other sightless people? Aw, little Miss Lady can't see ahead, can't see right, can't see left. Heads to the east, ends up west. <laughs> She's stuck! <laughs> she can't get down! Hey, what you looking at, Outworlder? Mind your own business! Stop it. What's this got to do with you? Your family or something? Cause you don't look like it. Hmm. You're just trying to be a hero. You sure you want to mess with the Lafu trio? Enough of this nonsense. Get away from me. Who do you her. think you are? Keep your nose out of this. I beat people up all the time. Yeah, get lost! Stop meddling in our business! The arrogant kid runs up to you and punches you. You stand strong, unmoving, but the boy falls backwards from the reaction force. Mars! Uh, stop yelling and help me up already! Uh, they use some kind of hidden power! I saw it! You're a cheater! That's right. If you hadn't cheated, I would have knocked your lights out. You sure about that, boss? They didn't even flinch. Ugh, shut up! Boss, let's get out of here. We shouldn't fight anyone that doesn't respect martial arts. <laughs> I'll let you off the hook this time. Next time we fight fair and square. Yeah! Three children flee from the scene while disgruntled. You take a chance to lead the girl away from the site of crime. <sighs> Thank you for helping me, mister. Are you okay? I'm okay. It's my fault. I shouldn't have wandered off on my own. Then I wouldn't have run into those guys. They... Oh, 
always laugh at me for being blind. And they like to trip me up and steal my things. <laughs> Thank goodness you were here. Otherwise, they wouldn't have let me off so easily. Don Shu wants me to deliver this medicine to you. Oh, Don Shu asked you to come? Things are bad on Olafu recently. Don Shu must be very busy. Thank you, mister. Remember to thank her for me. She takes the medicine and returns the way she came. <clears throat> Why does she wander about alone? Well, I've delivered the medicine. I should report back to Don Shu. Now the kids are gonna steal the medicine. How was she? Did you deliver the medicine? You describe what happened. She reminds me of myself when I was a child. I also had to find my way in the dark, face obstacles I couldn't predict, as well as deal with unconscious prejudices people had against me. If I was ever injured by bullies or after a fall, I'd run crying to the healers at the Alchemy Commission and ask them to heal me. I suppose that's why I followed in their footsteps, to pay a little kindness forward. Thank you for looking after the child. Could I ask you for another favor, friend? What do you need? I want to meet the little girl. Can you lead me to her? I worry about her wandering around on her own. And I want to know what's been on her mind lately. Her parents passed away in the denizens of Abundance Wars. The relatives who took her in aren't close to her. And whenever I treat her, she often confides in me. A healer's medicine might remedy one's physical health. But sometimes, the loneliness and hurt inside one's heart needs companionship and care to heal. She might have wandered far. Do you mind where... Do you know where we might she find her? She told me that whenever she's feeling troubled, she finds a quiet corner in the Artisanship Commission and just sits there, letting the sounds wash over her. Her parents used to be artisans in the Commission, so I think she has some nostalgic connection to the place. In all likelihood, that's where she'll be. <sighs> There's danger around every corner these days, especially for a sightless child. Let's go. Hmm, she's hinting that they might need to have some defense, so I'm going to change Welt for Kafka. Kafka's a little bit strong.
Ruh -ruh. This could be a big fight. Of course, imaginary is the number one most important in this fight. That's the one I just had. Stand still. Time to say bye. Boom. Well, that was quick. It's all right. Everything's okay now, shall you? Thank you, big brother. Thank you, Hansu. You don't need to be scared anymore. He is here. But I... When I think about all the trouble I've caused you two, I feel like such a burden. I'm sorry. Is that why you're crying? Maybe you should start getting used to this feeling. Because in the next few centuries, visually impaired people like us will continue to require help from everyone we meet. So, if a little bit of guilt like this is enough to break your heart, then how will you manage such an arduous path? Aren't you? Is it supposed to be comforting? I'm not trying to console her. This is the reality. Walking alone in the darkness, fearing every incoming, invisible obstacle. Unable to understand other people's descriptions. Everyone, everything is like a hot coal in the dark. Invisible, yet still able to burn you. As a long life species, she can expect life to continue like this for nearly a thousand years. She must learn to depend upon herself rather than just foolishly waiting around for the next hero to swoop in and save her. There will always be someone willing to help her. Aren't you helping to save her? Yes. By trying my best to change her personal circumstances. In the meantime, she'll have to learn to withstand the darkness. Just as I have. Hey, you're right. Sancho. From now on, I'll do my best to rely on myself. Good. I hope you remember this. Forever. This place is too dangerous. Let's head back to Exalting Sanctum. You send her and the little girl back. Thank you again, for all you've done. It would seem we incomplete ones are often bullied from a tender age. I endured in numerous hardships to become Chief Alchemist. Yet, there are still things that leave me feeling helpless. That's the reason I said what I said. You might mistake my words for being hurtful. But the truth is, no amount of words can prepare her for what lies ahead. Is there no cure? Does the Shancho have the technology to help with such impairments? For long life species, these things are permanent. Whether we are beautiful or ugly, tall or short, wise or foolish, all of it is encoded into our flesh from the moment we are born. The impairments of short life species can be corrected with ingenia or surgery. But that's an impossibility for Sienjo natives. 
No matter the method employed, how our bodies will eventually return to their original states. I too was once a non-believer. I fooled myself into acquiring artificial eye implants. Soon thereafter, my sightless eyes began to regenerate. And I was left in pain and despair. That brief window of sight that I regained has turned into a perpetual source of anguish. Forever etched into my mind. For long life species, this incompleteness is a permanent, unavoidable penance. <laughs> what a joke. Even the denizens of abundance, so-called abominations, needn't endure such torture. Perhaps we incomplete ones are merely traitors, cursed by the plague's author. Is the little girl gonna stay a little forever? What do you mean? You had a scary look on your face just now. It's nothing. Forget I said anything. Thank you for sticking with me through all of this. I think my aspirations in Exalting Sanctum have been met. For now. Oh. I have a gift for you. Though I'll need a little time to prepare it. I'll contact you once it's ready to collect. See you soon, friend. She'll message me in five seconds. Go to the bookshop and wait for her message. If you want to read and pick out a book, just go in and browse around. Call me when you want to pay. I'd like to read some books hmm. to pass the time. Go right go ahead. ahead. Mr. CM said that making bookworms feel at home is more important than getting them to buy something. All we ask is that you find a quiet spot away from the browsing areas. A book, book that has recently gotten popular and passes quickly. And there's the message. I prepared the present. Come back and I'll give it to you. Come in. Don't worry. I'll be there awaiting your present. Lord's commission. Huh. Looks like the person you were waiting for has gotten in touch. Safe travels. Oh, uh, maybe buy a book next time? I think I already bought all of them. Still have yet to read them. The Ambrosial Arbor. Ah, there you are, friend. You've been running so many errands lately. I'd like for you to take some useful items away with you. Examining the exhibits in the Seat of Divine Foresight inspired me to create this. I referenced some historical texts and concocted a medicine that can extend your lifespan and improve your health. I call it the Broomdew Concentrate Pellet. And I'd like you to have it. Consuming it will make your body light, Agile and promote longevity and well being. As a nameless, it'll make your journey a much less arduous one. Well, then, that's that. I've still got some other business to attend to, so shall we say goodbye for now? Perhaps the next time we meet, I'll be able to see you in the true sense of the word. She puts the box at the pellet at the table, you glance at it. Swallow it down, put it aside. Hmm. Swallow it down. Tastes a bit strange, but no adverse reactions so far. Uh, wait a minute. Ugh, my head. What's happening? Something's wrong. I'm burning up. It feels like I can't breathe. Not wrong. <sighs> 
seems to be calming down a bit, but still uncomfortable. This doesn't seem right. I'd better talk to Ching Zhu at the Seat of Divine Foresight. Yui stole her diary. What is your purpose for entering the Seed of Divine? Ugh. There goes my head again. Is Don Shu sure this broom dew is safe for consumption? What's happening? Isn't this the seat of divine foresight? Why are there so many Mara struck here? No, I can't let them get near me. That was a surprise. I didn't see that one coming. Say bye. Say bye. 
can't do. What happened to you? You came into the seat of divine foresight and started brandishing your weapon. Sorry, I didn't mean to. It looked like you'd lost control. As if you'd been stricken with Mara. There has to be something awry. Tell me what happened to you before arriving at the seat of divine foresight. You recount everything that happened between you and Don Shu when you tell her. From what you're saying, it seems like the gift she gave to you must be related to the Disciple's prescription we examined earlier. But the healer who examined you just now said your body doesn't seem to have been affected. <sighs> How strange. Could Don Shu be playing a trick on you? Or is her medicine somehow not working as planned? <sighs> My advice is to come back later for another examination. It's a Disciples of Sanctus Medicus prescription, after all. Who knows what healing effects it may have. I'll put out a wanted notice for Don Shu immediately. If you find any trace of her, get in touch with me. Take this detain with you. It might just help you find this... friend. Shu isn't here. Where could she be? I've got it. Don Shu's medicine box has her scent on it. I'll ask the D-Ting that Jingzu let me to track her. It follows her scent, leading you to the Artisanship Commission. Which you teleport to. The function button below to summon her to trap. Probably have to fight all these things. Oh, there's a Puzzle, I can do this. Oh. 
I see. It's actually silver, so we need to have this down here. And this. Here. Aha! Tracking this way. See her straight in. That's Don Shu. With a group of disciples? I guess that tells me all I need to know. Master, stand back. Let me handle this. Stand down. He's a friend. Many of our brethren have fallen by his hands. Yes, I am aware. What? I said he's my friend. Leave us. Yes, Master. I didn't expect you to come looking for me. They call you Master. You're the head of the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus? The head? What a crude way of putting it. I am master of the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus, scion of Merciful Medicus, and I shall lead the entire Sienjo Alliance onto the path of abundance. Did you ingest the Broomdew Concentrate pellet I gave you? I did. Did you feel the shift? So many elixir seekers arrive on the Sinjo in the hope of obtaining the formula to immortality. But none have succeeded. Their aspirations are well founded. The Sienjo does indeed harbor the secret to becoming immortal. I admire you. So, I thought I'd give you the chance to obtain it. Upon ingesting the Broomdew Concentrate Pellet, you will feel the limitless freedom of the form bestowed upon you by Merciful Medicus. And yet, you don't sound any different. Your breaths are not prolonged, and your presence doesn't feel like it's been altered in any way. Why is that? Is your constitution somehow different from the average person? I host the Stellaron inside me. A Stellaron? That's impossible. Even if what you say is true. To host a Stellaron as a short life species would only spell an early demise. It looks like you are not fated to live a long life. Friend, please. I urge you to leave the Lafu. Abandon this struggle. The truth isn't what it appears to be. What did the minions at the seat of divine foresight tell you about this conflict? That the Rainbow Arbiter is the emissary of the righteous? That the Arbiter is chasing the heathen plague's author across the stars? While the disciples of Sanctus Medicus abet their heresy? Do you really think that is the case? You don't understand Merciful Medicus, nor the devilish archer author, but you understand me. Do you see me as such? A heretic? I do not ask for you to pick a side. I just wish for you to leave the Lafu. To leave this all behind. This isn't your fight, and I do not wish to make an enemy of you. Let Don Chu go or battle with her. Since neither of us is eager to engage in combat, let us respectfully part ways. I have been thinking 
The devilish archer Arthur is not a benevolent god, nor is merciful Medicus a malevolent one. Your choice to align with Jing Yuan was simply due to meeting me first. Most unfortunate. Had you known me first, perhaps we could have been good friends. Master, we should leave now. I sincerely wish that this will be our last meeting. Farewell, Nameless. <sighs> I'd better report my findings to Qin Zhu at the Seat of Divine Foresight. She dropped something. Diary page two. Yup, yup. That's exactly what she dropped. And look at that. I see somebody asking for trouble over here. are very good. I'm just going to go to the next one. Time to say bye. Boom. Crazy big reward. I really hard to beat them. Yeah, we got it. Oh, for entering the seed of divine force. They're letting me in even though I just attacked them <laughs> ten seconds ago. Oh he's fine, he won't attack him. How did it go? Did you manage to locate Don Shu? You interrupt her and you report everything that happened. So you weren't able to apprehend her. I see. These people have been in hiding for so long. They must have a more nefarious plan. I've got to apprehend them quickly. Once again, thank you for all your help. With your intel, we will put a stop to Don Shu. Jing Yuan tells me you'll be joining the forces led by the Alchemy Commission and Master Diviner. I won't take up any more of your time. Please, take good care of yourself. If you run into Don Shu again, contact the nearest Cloud Knights. Take this as a token of my appreciation. You deserve it. Completed. Alright, we completed that one. That one was one of the big missions. Now they want me to do the other one. I'll see if this one links me to it now.
think we can do that. Just waiting, all right. Why didn't you tell us about Sanctus disciples of Sanctus Medicus earlier? Tell us the whole truth this time. Apologies. To avoid the dissemination of intelligence, the general and I kept the involvement of the disciples to ourselves. It is a clandestine organization that seeks to overthrow the alliance. Before the Celeron disaster, the disciples have remained veiled in shadow for years. Their emergence reflects their intricate connection to this calamity. The conflict is difficult, Master Diviner, but you have led your forces from the front lines and beyond in pursuit of the enemy. Admirable work. Hardly. A Diviner must acquire first-hand knowledge in order to calculate the future. Collecting intelligence in this way assists me in achieving the right answer. Wait. What's all this about a difficult conflict? The Disciples of Sanctus Medicus have been scheming for a long time, but our army is in no way inferior. How can things be so difficult? Is this a segue into us joining the fray? Just to just ask for our help already. It would seem you came prepared. The first time we met Madame Yukong, she said something like, This is a Sienjo affair, and there's no need for the Express to get involved. And now, here we are, running around doing everything. Even the IPC takes it easier on us. Oh, let me guess, what are we up to this time? Could it be heading to the front lines? Leading the Cloud Knight charge? Well, try this on for size. No! I can't stand any more of this fighting! So there! <sighs> Who said you'd be heading to the battlefield? Uh, we're not? Jin Yuan's orders. He said that the value of unexpected guests lies in the unexpected. The Cloud Knight's assault was to demonstrate our power to the enemy head on. Now, it is time for the unexpected. Please, come with me. After receiving the Ambrosial Arbor, the Alchemy Commission was once the Lawfu's most vital commission. After all, it was they who changed the Xianzhou natives into long-life species. The up, but in the end, the alchemists grew discontented and began to obsess over the manipulation of life. Research into the arbor poisoned their minds. The more they pursued it, the more they longed for it. Morning bells chime in a dream. Evening mist gathers around me. Do you see that? What huge elixir crucibles. There's still smoke coming out of them. This is where the alchemists practiced the way of immortality in ancient times. They erected elixir crucibles here to absorb the power of the arbor, turning fantasy into reality. Since the smoke from the crucibles never ceases, this place was named Eve Miss Mansion. An elegant name, but as far as the art of war is concerned, it's a death trap. As long as the crucibles are lit and the smoke continues to linger, we cannot get any closer. This is why the Cloud Knights lost control and became Mara Struck? Indeed. 
the disciples of Sanctus Medicus infuse the smoke that permeates this delve with medicinal pellets that elicit Mara. Unless the Cloud Knights were able to march with their breath held, they would be doomed to fall into disarray. Moreover, no one can know whether their comrade was about to be stricken with Mara. Is there anything better than fear for destroying the morale of Mara? The Cloud Knight's first assault was just a cover. You're using the main army to attract the enemy's attention, while we douse the elixir crucibles and stop the smoke. The disciples of Sanctus Medicus renounced their century of secrecy and chose to reveal themselves, meaning they feel confident of victory. But no matter how well prepared they may be, their focus has always been the Cloud Knights. They are completely unaware of your existence and capacity, and in short, cannot be prepared against you. The smoke can't affect us. Why not get the Foxians and Vidyarara to try it? Indeed. This demonic vapor is a weapon targeted against the Cloud Knights. The Ambrosial Arbor is taboo for the La Fu, and the Sien Alliance has always been fiercely independent. The disciples of Sanctus Medicus can never have guessed that the General would seek outside help. They won't be prepared against short life species. Is this what General Jin Yuan meant by unexpected guests? I wouldn't hazard a guess. All I can say is that the predictions of the Stellaron Hunters were more accurate than mine. The future that Kafka seeks is becoming reality. One step at a time. I don't want to act according to the predictions. This is the only way. Rather, only this way leads to the known best result. If we can afford to choose, then none would choose to leap off a cliff. Besides, this is not my decision alone. The duty of the Master Diviner is to bring luck and avoid misfortune. I don't want my choice to plunge the Lafu into a terrible future. To return to the matter at hand, only you can douse the Elixir Crucibles without being harmed by them. What say you? Ah, <sighs> fine. I didn't hear a please, but... Seeing as we do kind of have superpowers around here... Mr. Yang, what do you think? I will come at once when the smoke dissipates. You won't be left to fend for yourselves. Turn off three small elixir prisoners. Huh. I feel like even though long life species get to live forever, they aren't so different from us short life species when it comes to worries and suffering. for the concern, but I'm fine. The general commanded me to stay with you. I dare not go against military orders. Your life is more important, Miss Tinyun. Go back. We can explain to the general. <laughs> there is really no need. I've spent my years traveling the universe. Not to mention, I'm younger and stronger than I look. The benefactors have probably lived longer than me. This must be the smoke that damages it. Alright, we stopped one. Seems like the smoke is getting thinner. Nothing enough. We need to hurry. Alright, I think the other one is right there. No goodbye.
Whoa. We don't want that. Oh no. Couldn't do it while they're attacking me. That was an accident. It's gonna be tough too, because I'm 67. Someone right behind me. Your yep. body is beautiful in its fragility. Alright, I'm gonna go up here. Yay, we did it! <laughs> so, you succeeded in dowsing the elixir cultures. It's Cocolia. Unimportant. The inevitable is already upon us. It's you. Oh. I have met you before in my capacity as chief alchemist, master diviner. You don't seem surprised. Indeed. The general and I knew that the disciples of Sanctus Medicus must be hiding in the Alchemy Commission. However, without evidence, we couldn't bring charges before the commissions. We had to wait for you to show yourselves. And now, your charges are many. Drawing Stellaron spirits into the Sienjo. Resurrecting the Ambrosial Armor. Striking down our people with Mara. The Ten Lords Commission will address these transgressions during your reckoning. Crimes? If I am guilty, then all of our Sienjo ancestors are also guilty. They were the ones who accepted the blessings of the Abundance and turned their descendants into long life species. The disciples of Sanctus Medicus are only walking on the road our ancestors once took. How is it a crime to seek ascendance? In days of old, the roots of the Ambrosial Arbor enveloped the Sienjo Lafu like a living creature. We controlled the stellar seas, and none could stand in our way. Everyone could become celestial, and shift form at will. Divine miracles descended onto all nine Sienjo ships. What a glorious time that was. How far the Sienjo has fallen. We consent to be commanded by the devilish archer. Suffer continuously at the hands of the denizens of abundance. And the Ten Lords Commission even forces us to give up our immortality. How pitiful. I do not blame you for your ignorance. We were not born in the era when the Ambrosial Arbor first descended. Nor did we witness its miracles. But now, we now have an opportunity to restore the ancient laws. <laughs> Forgive me for thinking you might have harbored some profound enlightenment. Yours is the same old talk of those who seek power and give up on their humanity. Our Sienjo ancestors fought side by side with the Arbiter, laid waste to the Arbor, and establish the Ten Lords Commission to lay down the lines between life and death. In doing so, 
We enshrined our future as human beings. Celestials? There are no Celestials on the Sienja. The divine miracles of the abundance, the manipulation of life and death. Your deeds are nothing but evil. I have nothing to say to you, Master Diviner. You have already made your decision. You have discarded power. A most foolish choice. Now we fight her. Master Diviner, allow me to show you what the Celestials were capable of. Defense or hit? I'm going to use defense for him. Let's blaze! Let's! Forward! How many can you block? Good times never last. Time to say bye. <laughs> next. So this, we don't want to use for magic anymore. We'll start with this little guy right here. She can restore her, I suppose. Thanks. You're too good to me. Sensor hit it. Eh, uh, somebody's got to hit it, right? Let's see my magic for him. Single target. Big hit. Yeah, great. Ultimate. Bring it up. <laughs> All right, success. Take down the hovering guy or the guy on the ground. I had the guy on the ground at least. Oh, yeah. Time for sword play. Jesus. Save it, but <clears throat> you never know when you're about what's going to happen. Lance at the ready. Just a little something. Thank you. Nice teamwork. Bye oh, bye. Alright, this one's going to be tough. I'm going to have to use her. Might have to use a little bit of Okay, now we're poisoned. Let's start with the little guys. I'm 
on guard. Oh no, we lost one. Just a little something. Think nothing. Good times. Time to say bye. Boom. More than medicine. Hmm. Lance at the ready. Hit it, hit her while she's down. Myself, since I'm the one healing you. Right I'm on guard. I'm in defense. I'm not a surrender. Just a little something. Think nothing of you. Lance of Blaze. Lance! Forward! Nice teamwork. May as well kill them all. 
Good times never last. Time to say bye. Boom. Yay, bro. more than medicine. That's better. Lance of Blaze. Lance! Forward! Attack here if she can use her superpower one. Stand still. Lance Blaze. I think we might take her. Unless she goes into mode 3 or something. Like that. Should I attack? Let's attack. Let's finish her off. It would seem the time has come for other means of dismantling the Xianzhou from within. <sighs> what a shame. It would have been nice to have stayed for a little longer. <laughs> you received the gift of abundance. Myself. It wasn't the end. I am Lord Ravager. But he retired. He re healed, so that's good. I have come with a single purpose to set in motion the self destruction of the Sienjo. Miss Ting Yun, is the Lord Ravager of the Anti Matter Legion? But uh, how can that be? Keep calm, all of you. This is a formidable enemy. We have to stay together. Strike the park. May as well kill them all. That's better. 
nice teamwork. More than medicine. for leaving so soon, but I have an appointment to keep. I'm sure my friends here will be happy to entertain you. Uh-oh. Target's on him. We need a shield and quick. Not a child. You're too good to me. How many can you block? Blade is blocked. Practice is over. Swords is set. I'm okay. Relax. 
Got one down. Lance at the ready. Our healer. May as well kill them all. Lance the blaze. Lance! Forward! Oh, I'll be right back. Time for sword play. Blade and flight. Yes. How many can you block? stuff. We can do the dailies, we can do other quests, let's see what the other stuff is. Let's see what that, there was one that was waiting on a quest. Am I done with that quest or not? We'll probably not get to that one. Let's do the other one. Okay, go to the base to answer the call.
why there's so many people here. What's going on? Correct. All the cabins they might pass by have been checked. Remember to report to lead researcher Asta. Hello. We'll deal with problems outside the base zone later. Huh? It's you. You surprised? Sorry, this is embarrassing. We suddenly had some stuff come up. I wanted to take care of it before you arrived, but I can't seem to even get a break around here. Never mind about that. Here, this is for you. I made it this morning, and I've been keeping it warm. You made me some fried rice. It's just a little something I whipped up. I spent a long time wondering what to give you. In the end, I realize I should stick to what I'm good at. Miss Asa loves my fried rice, so I hope you like it too. Sorry it's so noisy here. I wanted to find somewhere quieter where I could get your feedback, but... That's alright. Hmm. I'm pretty confident in this dish. Unfortunately, I was a bit rushed at the end. Some big shot suddenly decided to visit the space station today. Everyone has been in a hurry since the announcement. They're all worried that a bad impression could damage Madame Herta's reputation. Miss Asta said that the guest appears to be Madame Herta's research partner. If he's doing research with her, he must be famous throughout the galaxy. Ah, look at the time. The guest is almost here. If you're curious, just follow the crowd. Miss Asta and I will be there soon. Heard his research partner? I remember she once talked about. The elevator's entrance seems to be nearby. I shall check it out now. Four minutes and 13 seconds earlier than the appointed time. I hope it's not a bother. Of course not, Mr. Skrullum. Welcome to Herta Space Station. No need for formalities, Asa. Herta Space Station is where knowledge converges. Here we celebrate the equality of thought. Such collaboration between organic life forms is magnificent and efficient. You're rebuilding the space station far quicker than I could have imagined. We appreciate your high praise, Mr. Skrullum. Would you like me to show you around? Since the last summit, we've launched several new research projects focused on silicon-based matrices. Well, that sounds lovely, but I do have a meeting with Herta, so let's put the new surprises on hold for now. Madam Herta should be in her office. I'll take you there, right this way. Sure. And you are? Hi, I'm Mingler. Ah, hello, young sir. I've heard so much about you. Herta talks about you often. She's quite curious about you, as am I. What is it like to live in symbiosis with a Stellaron? I hope we'll have sufficient time in the future to get to know each other and answer this question. I wanted to show you around, but now I don't think I'll be able to get away. Go ahead. You won't be able to catch up. 
All right. See you later. Arlen's busy. Better leave him alone. That person over there seems to be doing something to the portrait. Oh, strange. It should be around here somewhere. Uh, maybe it's hidden inside Madame Herta's portrait. Huh? Uh, do you need something? If you're looking for the front desk, just go straight through those doors. What are you doing? You having trouble with something? Such a concerned and responsive tone. You must be the one everyone's been talking about recently. Your kind-heartedness is famous throughout the space station. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Leonard, a cybersecurity engineer here at the space station. You probably know that this place was recently attacked by the Antimatter Legion. In the chaos, the master control system for each zone was paralyzed. Now that the station is being rebuilt, my job is to repair equipment and restore the space station's cybersecurity. But during the repair process, I discovered some anomalies. The access records show that a third party other than the Legion invaded while the master control system was paralyzed. Was it the lady in sunglasses? I don't know who or what it was. Actually, I'm investigating that right now. We suspect that it may have been the Stellaron Hunters. It's an elusive group and very dangerous. Every member is on the IPC's wanted list. They include a super hacker from Punk Lord. I'm ashamed to admit that I've lost to her once before. A while ago, I discovered her whereabouts during a screening process. I was planning to follow the clues to find more details about her, but I fell into her trap. Can you guess what happens next? She reverse hacked my device, sent out a bunch of spam, made a video game open to the space station, and told everyone that an idiot named Leonard made a big silly mistake. Ugh, I don't want to think about it. Now that everything is calmed down, I thought they'd be on my case already. The silver lining? Madame Herta was generous enough to allow me to continue investigating this matter. Congratulations. Normally she doesn't want to deal with it. She's getting revenge on you. I wouldn't go that far. I'm just a nobody. You think Madame Herta would remember me? To put it simply, the leaders have given me an opportunity. How could I not cherish it? If I can make up for my mistakes and do a good job, I may have a chance to prove myself. This time, I plan to start from inside the space station and see if I can find some clues to trace the intruder's steps. Maybe I can find the blind spot I missed before. I designed a decoding program. Look, it looks like a camera, but it's actually a detector. We should be able to find hidden clues with it. Just like this. He aims at the wall. Something seems to appear in the wall. Oh, uh, uh, that's, uh... A drop of sweat, a drop of water, a blue teardrop-shaped object. Ah, uh, she's just so pretty. What are you talking about? This looks like... Oh, a drop of sweat? Unbelievable! Why would something like this be in the space station? The staff wouldn't even dare scribble on the wall, let alone leave a drop of sweat! So this is what we're looking for? This suspicious evidence? It wasn't what I was expecting, but... It was quite unexpected. Wait a second. Uh, let me take a look. Oh. Oh, I see. This is digital graffiti that appears to represent punk Lorian symbols. If I'm not mistaken, this should be some kind of automatic encryption. We need to decipher it if we want to find any culpatory evidence. What's this have to do with me? You got me there. I got caught up in our conversation. I wasn't paying attention. 
Uh, let me think. Uh, maybe I've been under too much stress recently and I subconsciously want a friend. Anyway, if I were to find clues related to the Stellaron Hunters, wouldn't that be helpful to you too? Ah, just do me a favor. It won't take up too much of your time. Here, just point it at the graffiti on the wall. Speaking of glasses, sunglasses. Pointed at the wall, blinking blue patterns started to appear. Suddenly, the pattern imploded and engulfed its surrounding sounds. Its surrounding sounds and colors, something inside seems to be breaking out from it. Taken care of. That scared me to death. Seems to be an extra person. But look, just like I guess, this graffiti is encrypted. If we decipher it, we can see some hidden information. The surveillance camera captured her face. Silver Wolf. It's exactly the same as the photo on the IPC's wanted list. Let me see what she was up to. Is this a transmitter beacon? Oh, I see. She probably ran into the Antimatter Legion during the invasion, then used this beacon to teleport the enemy somewhere else. We accidentally activated the beacon again just now, and they were brought back. Jeez, Stellaron hunters have the ability to stow enemies away like that? Beacon transmission that doesn't require a power source and can be implemented solely through computation? No wonder they were able to break into the space station. With this, I'm afraid not even Madame Herta's office is safe. Don't be discouraged. Is this kind of tech really that impressive? Have some faith. We'll figure this out. It's really hard to stay calm. You know, if it wasn't for you, I'd probably be lying on the ground right now. So it's really important that we work together. Please. There's a strange signal nearby. Maybe it's another piece of graffiti. Look, up there. They even put down a question mark. They must be making fun of us. Fight number two. She went towards the base zone. <sighs> yep. There's only one. Ah, disappeared again? This thing keeps cutting out when I'm deciphering it. She must have stopped here for a bit. Let's look around. Can you let me have some fun this time? Our last few operations turned out to be pretty dull. She makes it seem easy. Is she really looking at the Curio Collection Index? There's a voice. Judging by how calm she is, she must have been in this room for a while. Maybe she was waiting for someone. Not sure what happened after that. Let's search somewhere else. Fake ID and 
Codes ready. Ah, so that's what happened. She sneaked in first, then helped her partner in through the main door. It's a classic hacking operation. Let's see. The registered name is... Leonard Colliwell! Aha, you're the imposter. Among us. I knew you were sus from the beginning. Leonard Call who well. She used my identity. I, I never noticed that there was an issue with this record. I subconsciously glanced right past it when I saw my own name. She's so cunning. He's a sneaky one. Maybe you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Maybe it's time for you to throw in the towel. It's an honest mistake! The reaction of any ordinary person is to check for unfamiliar names, right? <laughs> Who would think to check their own name? The graffiti's location is quite... interesting. Feels like she's playing a game with us. One dot leads to another. It's really fun. It's really annoying. I heard from a friend that the hackers on Punk Lord have a tradition. When they hack, they purposely leave something behind for people to discover. Kind of like throwing down the gauntlet. They call this the Punk Lord mentality. There can only be competition when there is rivalry. And there can only be excitement when there is competition. Life's a game, and having fun is what's most important. I don't understand that way of thinking. But it seems like this graffiti might have been left behind for us on purpose as a clue. The same thing happened last time as well. I was so close to the target, but got obliterated in the final battle of information. Oh, so close yet so far. It's not your fault. Let's focus on the right thing. Right. It doesn't help dwell on past failures. Thank you. Ah, she seems to be leaving. Let's keep up. They seem to be heading toward the monitoring room. The human body is beautiful in its fragility. Ah, uh, 
another graffiti. They're all different too. She really put some thought into this. of the record damaged? She went through the wall and disappeared. She altered the records? She teleported herself? Would it be a display malfunction? I don't think so. That's not the same as passing straight through a wall. Look! Hold on, I got it! It might be an effect from a curio! There was a pre-established folded space here, and the intruders found it and took advantage of it! No wonder she kept going through the Curio Collection Index. This space is connected to the Stellaron room. Do you still remember it? That's where they put the Stellaron inside you! I can't recall. I think I remember this. Kafka. Huh? What are you muttering about? Hmm. Why would they leave you here if their objective was the Stellaron? With her capabilities, all she would have needed to do was make another beacon. She would have been able to escape with the Stellaron, no problem. Huh? There's no graffiti here. Oh, we're doomed! The trail has gone cold. Ugh, so strange. Did she really leave just like that? She came all this way and didn't take anything with her, nor leave anything behind. Oh, um, they did leave you behind. <clears throat> Sorry, that sounded better in my head. It must have been a terrible feeling waking up in a place that was completely unfamiliar to you. That's alright, it wasn't so bad. Sounds like you've experienced it yourself. I can't help but feel there's more that they're after. <sighs> I really hope I can find something that's useful to you. Otherwise, I'll feel bad for having you do so much work for nothing. <sighs> the more I talk about it, the worse I feel. I should probably find something that I can do. Hmm. There's a rating pistol here. I wonder what my rating would be. Whoa, look here. There's a strange access log in the rating pistol's compartment. It looks like the log time occurred during the Legion's invasion. The researchers would have already been evacuated by then. Could it have been her? In which case, she didn't leave immediately. She implanted the Celeron inside you and then fiddled around with the rating pistol for a while. Could it be that... I just realized something. We need to go to the Curio Collection Room on the other side. remembered that Madame Herta has a game cartridge named Punk Lord Mentality in her collection. Game cartridge? Punk Lord? I think I've seen it in simulated universe. You remember it, right? It's actually on the list of missing curios. I wasn't able to put the two together before. If the hacker has a personal objective other than the Celeron Hunter's mission... I, I got it! I got it now! The Stellaron Hunter's operation was just to cover for her! So he's actually after the Curio. Feels like you got it backwards. That's right! She was so interested in the Curio Collection Index that she stayed in the space station even after her mission was complete. This was what she was truly after. She knew we would be looking for the Stellaron Hunters and used it as her cover. 
very smart. To be expected of someone from Punk Lord. Hold on, though. Something doesn't add up. The curios are Madame Herta's most prized possessions. All the visit requests are sent to her office from the computer in the main control room. Some researchers tried to gain access to the curios for research purposes once, but they didn't get proper authorization. She caught them all red-handed. I have a bad feeling about this. Could it be that the main control room was hacked as well? She values them even more than the researchers? Well, they're definitely far more important than I am. But enough of that. We should go check out the main control room. Wait, don't move. Oh, I get chills just looking at the space station monitors now. Let me investigate first. Just perfect. Not only did she shut off all the access logs, she shut off all the terminal transmissions too. I thought it was the Legion that did this. We need to do a restart. No one notices it this whole time. Let's focus on the main task first. I am curious, though. She paused the terminal transmissions, but didn't touch the local data at all. I really don't get her. I wonder if she want, they want us to find it, hunter, and then she'll take it. The behind. As a hacker, she doesn't delete the local log. Hmm. There's an external port here. I'm gonna plug in and take a look. I have a bad feeling about this. Might be a trap. Why don't you let me do it? Relax, friend. I've done this a million times. Look at this agreement. As you fear, a burst of light shines and the enemy disappears. I was thinking there might be a fight here. Blade and flash. Time to say bye. Thankfully, I think we have their weaknesses. fishy about the local data she left behind. So there's something strange after all. Now we can browse through the curio access logs. Huh? That can't be right. This curio doesn't seem to have ever left the space station. She didn't take the curio either. It just disappeared into thin air. Hmm. From the way things look, yes. The records show that this curio was last sent to... Madame Herta's office? And then it disappeared? You used it in the I'm game. I'm seriously confused. The simulated what did she come universe. here for? She wouldn't have put the graffiti up just to mess with us, would she? <sighs> no, if I start thinking like that, I may as well give up now. I have to fully investigate every lead, or I'll really be out of a job. gonna happen. I'll say it again. I don't care what Run may said to you, but there's no chance we're shutting down the simulated universe. Perta, I've made my decision. Question. What have we invested into this project? Hundreds of system hours, the resources of an entire planet, and the most advanced technology in the entire universe. And what have we gotten in return? Unknowns, confusion, and a series of errors. In the beginning, we defined the simulated universe as a miniature world that could be used to discover the traces of the eons. But now, it's become something far removed from its original purpose. The simulated 
universe is bound to make errors. You said that yourself, and that's exactly what we're experiencing. Why is that a problem all of a sudden? I adore the vast amount of knowledge, but I cannot accept that the simulated universe remains simply a pending contract waiting to be attended to. Herta, think about it. How many surprises has this project given you? And how many disappointments has it given you? The simulated universe never disappointed me. You are what disappoints me, Skrulum. Do you really think of yourself as someone so exceptionally amazing? <laughs> right now, you're more like, like, like someone from the Nitwit Society. <sighs> Herta, I don't mean to question you. Nor do I want to deny the hard work you've put forth for the simulated universe. I just want to give more room for knowledge and inspiration to grow freely. That's enough. Leave if you don't want to be part of this. Go tell the other two yourself. Oh, and take your tech with you. I don't need it. I can go find Adrian Taylor or the red-nosed old man from Epsilon. Or even the Intelligentsia Guild. At least they won't quit halfway. Ugh. Skrulum, we've known each other for a long time. This is the first time I feel that you're nothing but a piece of ice-cold metal. My apologies, sir. What happened? What's with her? Never expected to see that kind of expression on her face. This all started with me. I was the one that brought up the request to end our academic collaboration. Well, don't get me wrong, I have nothing against Herta or the project. The simulated universe is a great experiment, and Herta is a true genius. However, we have our differences when it comes down to our long-term vision for the future. These differences will often manifest into bias, and bias will get in the way of the formulation of knowledge. Deep down, I want to continue to believe in Herta. The question is whether one should end a collaboration that no longer holds true to its original intent. From an objective standpoint, I should end it immediately. Are you worried about her mental state? A little. Not at all. I'm more worried about the mental state of the researcher. Uh, then I'm glad I haven't caused you vexation on her behalf. The emotions of organic life are like tides. It is my fault for not noticing the trajectory of the moon. Let Herta be alone for a while, so she can calm her emotions. It'll be beneficial for our negotiations later as well. As for the simulated universe, if that's the reason you're here, Maybe I can help in answering your questions. Explain what happened. Hmm. Sir, <clears throat> bonfire in the depths of the woods. A lone stone sword points to the stars. Punk Lord mentality. That is no ordinary curio, my friend. That is a love letter a galaxy ranger has written for the universe. Young sir, how much do you know about Punk Lord? I've heard of it, don't know much. Nobody, I mean, nobody knows more about Punk Lord than I do. It is a planet made of data and symbols. The edges of reality and illusion are blurred in Punk Lord, as are its days and nights. An ether cartridge is a chip that Punk Lordian hackers use to edit reality. The ways through which a hacker perceives and modifies the world are recorded on the chip. It's a recording of the hacker's life and proof of their existence. The one on the space station belonged to someone truly legendary. He became a galaxy ranger by accident and spent many long years traveling among the stars. He encountered countless fascinating individuals and saw wonders witnessed by few. Many of the records and details recorded therein are beyond the knowledge of even the IPC and the Intelligentsia Guild. 
That is why it became part of the masses of calculation data for the simulated universe. Yes. No need to worry, my friend. The cartridge has never left the space station. It's as I said, it is a very important reference for the simulated universe. That is why its data has been extracted and added to the calculations of the universe model. Herta was probably impulsive and added the cartridge into the simulation without telling anyone, resulting in the item being listed as lost. So it was a false alarm? I'm still a little worried that person could have gotten into the office. I understand your concern. If the individual in question did indeed try to hack into Herta's office, then the simulated universe is undoubtedly her next target. As such, please allow me to offer my limited abilities to assist you with your investigation, sir. As you already know, the simulated universe will be shut down temporarily. It will remain shut until Herta and I come to a clear conclusion. Yes, this is the last chance to investigate the cartridge data. By way of apology for shutting down the simulated universe, I will use my abilities in the universe to provide you with what assistance I can. This is my recommendation. Please take your time to consider it. Alright, we'll go ahead and put a cut in the video for now. Let me see if anyone else is on and we'll uh, flip over. Oh, Shamie is on. Okay. Oh, nope, not on anymore. Was on and just decided to leave right when I looked at it. Let's see who else we got. We could do. Okay, let's do Tyler again. Let's go raid Tyler Salt. Alright, have a great weekend. Have fun watching the uh, US soccer game tonight.